Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hi, I'm Ken Sherman, your host on Business Innovators Radio. Thanks for tuning in today. We've got a great show and I'm excited to talk with my next guest, Dr. Anthony Pavanka from Pavanka Family Chiropractic. Dr. Pavanka has been featured in national media as a subject matter expert in treating scoliosis in both adults and children. And he's with us today with some interesting findings about the correlation between crooked teeth and scoliosis. So let's learn more about Dr. Pavanka and what he's doing to keep us all healthy. Welcome to the show, Dr. Pavanka. Thanks for having me, Ken. As a full-service chiropractor, I understand you offer not only chiropractic treatment, but also fitness training, diet programs, scoliosis treatment. You have a lot going on there. Can you tell us about the types of patients you help and maybe give us a brief overview of each area of your practice? Well, sure thing. Um, Our office, as far as chiropractic services goes, we do a method called chiropractic biophysics, which can be kind of paralleled to orthodontics in the dental realm. Most people go to the chiropractor just to get adjusted for their pain, and when the pain goes away, they go away. But what that typically leaves is an uncorrected underlying structural problem with their spine that's just going to flare back up and give them the same pain again and let their spine continue to worsen. So our philosophy is uh, we're going to try to take that spine from where it's at now to the normal or more normal position so that the spine works better and ultimately gives you a longer-lasting result. So that's our focus chiropractically. We do offer within our practice um, also diet programs. Our our goal is to help families achieve and maintain better health. And having uh, a good overall weight is part of that uh, mantra. So, um, you know, if someone's coming to our office and they need to lose 100 pounds, that's not going to exactly help them be healthy. So we offer weight loss. Uh, We use a program called Ideal Protein, and it's a ideal amount of protein per day with a very low amount of carbohydrates so that you get into what's called ketosis and actually metabolize the fat off your body while maintaining your muscle mass. So you don't lose muscle mass. So when you come off the program, your metabolism is still there and you have a tendency not to gain the weight back as quickly. We also do offer a lot of scoliosis treatments. Um, We have um, chiropractic methods for scoliosis treatment. We also offer uh, different types of braces. We have a soft brace called the spine cord brace which is not a newer brace, but it's a, it's a revolutionary brace in the fact that it doesn't work so much on just squeezing your body. It's more of a positional type of brace. And then we offer a rigid brace called the Scully brace, which is similar to the spine cord brace in the fact that it's uh, going to work more to correct posture and the actual structure of the spine with the scoliosis versus just using like a, a Boston brace to squeeze the patient, hold the scoliosis where it's at. Um, and we also offer foot orthotics. Uh, we do casting for foot orthotics because, again, with scoliosis patients, a lot of them have foot problems and other types of skeletal issues. So uh, we offer foot orthotics to uh, help correct any imbalances in the foot and leg length, things like that. So we do have quite a few things going on in our practice. (laughs) Now, I know you operate the business with uh, your wife, Dr. Patricia Babanka. And in fact, both of you have been featured in the the media before as uh, subject matter experts in scoliosis. You're one of the premier providers here in Arizona of scoliosis treatment, non-surgical options anyway. Is that correct? Right, yep. I'd like to focus in on scoliosis treatment, and particularly in children for today's interview. Can you tell us about your work with children that have scoliosis? Do you have maybe any special certifications in scoliosis treatment? Well, our certification, um, being chiropractors, we're um, advanced certified in our method that we utilize, which is chiropractic biophysics. We are both uh, have a fellowship with that group. We've also trained to provide both the types of braces that we offer. So we're certified through spine cord to do the spine cord brace. We're also certified through Skelly Brace to provide the Skelly Brace, which has numerous different variations. The Skelly Brace has standard braces, has nighttime braces, has kyphosis braces, it has uh, infantile braces. So you know, there's, there's quite a bit of things that we're able to do with scoliosis. Infantile braces, that's interesting. Is it, so is it best to treat scoliosis in the early stages? I guess the sooner you find it and the sooner you treat it, the, the better the outcome? Yes, for sure. So, I mean, there's different varieties of scoliosis as far as age groups go. So, I mean, there are actually infants that will develop a scoliosis. And most of those cases, the 80% of the time, the scoliosis is going to resolve on its own. Uh, but 20% of the time, they don't. And when infantile scoliosis doesn't resolve, it gets typically really bad. And... Uh, traditional medical approach to that is they're going to do what's called serial casting, which is they're going to put the child into a, they're going to basically uh, anesthetize and put them out 
and then attach their hands to a, a bar on one side and their feet to a bar on the other and basically stretch the child and pull their spine straight and then wrap a cast around them. Wow. So you can imagine that uh, the cleanliness issue there is going to be pretty hard for an infant, plus the infant's not going to be able to move very well. And they just go back every 6 to 12 weeks and take that cast off, do the procedure again, so the child's going to be continually exposed to anesthesia and put in these body casts. But it is very effective. It does work really well, but it is rather traumatic for the child. So we're able to kind of do a similar approach to that using a brace, which doesn't require them to be anesthetized. And it's able to be taken on and off, so it's, it's uh, just as effective as doing serial casting, but you know, there's a lot of better issues there. As far as cleanliness and the ability of the child to adapt to it, juvenile scoliosis, which would be ages 3 to 10, uh, typically those are going to be non-resolving. Those are going to be more advanced, more aggressive, and, and non-resolving. So you know, the earlier we can catch those, the better the chances are we're going to have a good outcome down the road. Uh, and then there's a traditional adolescent scoliosis, which you're going to see kids 10 years and older um, that uh, will typically treat with either chiropractic methods or some sort of bracing. But yeah, the, the earlier we can see a, a child that's developing a scoliosis, the better because uh, the earlier the, the detection, the better the outcome. What's interesting is not all chiropractors really treat scoliosis. What is it about scoliosis? Did you get a personal connection to someone with scoliosis that sort of led you down that path? Yeah, so in my particular family, we have a history of scoliosis. So my mom had a very bad scoliosis in the 50s, and her spine was actually surgically fused at the age of 14. Mm. She was one of the first people to ever wear a Milwaukee brace. So she's had issues with her spine ever since she had the surgery. Today she's in her 70s, and she's she's pretty humped over, and she's got um, you know, a lot of health issues because of the scoliosis she had a very long time ago. And then myself, I have a scoliosis. I didn't even know I had it until I went to chiropractic college, but I do have one. It's about a 26 degree upper thoracic type of curve. And my middle daughter also has scoliosis. So yeah, I have a very personal connection to scoliosis. So what is it that causes scoliosis in children, or I guess even later in life in adults? Well, that's the thing um, about it is that uh, the term after scoliosis is always idiopathic, and that term idiopathic means unknown origin. So they really don't have any real concrete uh, idea what causes scoliosis. There are different, you know, there are, you know, scoliosis where um, it's neurogenic, where, you know, if a person has cerebral palsy or some neurological disorder like that, most times they're going to develop a scoliosis just because they can't hold their body up and they get uh, trunkless and they'll develop a curve. So we can, you know, we know that that person's scoliosis is because of their neurological problem, but just scoliosis that comes on for no reason in a healthy child, they don't know what causes it. But you know, there's a strong genetic link to it. My particular case, uh, if you have a family history of scoliosis, then your chances for having it develop in, for yourself is about 70%. So wow. you know, there's, a, there's a strong genetic correlation. They just don't know what specific gene does it, why it happens. You know, it's not going to be every kid that's born to a person who has scoliosis. So I mean, 70% of cases are of idiopathic scoliosis or in kids who have no family history, no genetic uh, link to for, for scoliosis at all. So, What are the risks of scoliosis left untreated in a young developing child? Well, the, the big risks are <clears throat> if you don't do anything about it, it's just going to progress. And you know, the natural history of scoliosis is to progress. And it's gonna, it can eventually get to a point where it's going to begin to interfere with the functioning of the heart and the lungs and the gastrointestinal system if they get severe enough. And so you know, those can lead to then surgical intervention, which is going to be the implantation of two rods on either side of the spine from the you know, base of your neck to the top of your hips. So you know, that would be the worst case scenario is that you get organ dysfunction and you end up with surgery. So we want to make sure that that is prevented at all costs because that is a radical way to go. So how can a parent identify if a child is developing scoliosis? Obviously, you want to, you want to catch it as early as possible. Are there home checks maybe a parent could do themselves? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everyone remembers back in the day. I know when I was in elementary school, we used to go and have the school nurse check us every year for scoliosis, but that doesn't happen as much anymore, and I'm not sure why. You know, it's probably due to budgets and things like that. But you, know, you can do that same check at home, and on our website, uh, our correctscoliosis.com website, we have a uh, YouTube link on there for a home check. And basically it's as simple as just having your child stand in front of you, put their arms straight out in front of them, hands together, lean forward, put your hands between your knees, and just look at the contour of their back. And if you notice that the ribs are humping up on one side or if there's 
you know, obvious uh, contour changes in the surface of the back, then you know, that's somebody we want to get checked. Other interesting things that we've kind of been learning about are uh, tooth issues. You mm -hmm. can look at your children's teeth, and if you see that their jaw is not lined up or the top teeth and bottom teeth aren't lined up or if they're biting on one side inside their top teeth, um, you know, there's some there's some dental malocclusions that are linked and indicated for scoliosis. So you know, doing home checks, looking at their teeth, going to the dentist, those are all things that can uh, kind of give you early detection. Let's talk a little bit more about that. So research has shown that there's a relationship between crooked teeth and scoliosis in kids? Yeah, there's a strong correlation. The studies that I've read say up to 26 to 55 percent risk for kids that have um, a certain type of dental malocclusion for developing scoliosis. Hmm. Can scoliosis be prevented and you know by orthodontic intervention or as something that just sort of goes along with it? Well, it's I've read studies that say you know that the child has a scoliosis, they put braces on. You know, it's just a something. Okay, they're going to have a scoliosis, so they're obviously going to have a need for braces. But I also have read some studies done on animals where if they induce what's called a unilateral cross bite, which is if you look at the jaw from the straight on, if, and the teeth aren't going to line up, so the top teeth and the bottom teeth don't exactly come together just like they're supposed to. One side of the teeth are going to bite down normally where they're going to contact as they should. The upper teeth are going to bite down inside the lower teeth. And that's called a unilateral crossbite. And when you see that, that's the strong correlation, like I said, 26 to 55% correlation with that type of uh, malocclusion with uh, scoliosis intervention. So what they do is with these animal studies is they'll take, uh, they took rabbits and, and rats and they induced a unilateral crossbite. And what it did is it actually, when they would induce the crossbite, it would cause a scoliosis. And when they relieved the crossbite, when they corrected the crossbite, the scoliosis would go away. So any um, studies done that I've looked for or seen um, in kids, but you can say, okay, well, you know, if you have maybe a juvenile curve developing and you look at the child's teeth, if their teeth are also showing uh, unilateral crossbite, you know, maybe if you get them to an orthodontist who does um, uh, work on trying to widen the palate and, and decrease the uh, malocclusion and, cre and uh, correct the crossbite, Maybe you're going to do something to also help prevent the progression of the scoliosis. So, you know, interesting, we, we're working with an orthodontist here in Mesa and kind of testing that out and see how that works uh, to see if we send our scoliosis kids there, if it's going to help them stabilize and uh, not have to progress on to surgery. It's interesting, just uh, malocclusions, you know, in the jaw and, and teeth could cause scoli something like scoliosis. Are, are there other skeletal deformities that children are maybe more susceptible to if they've been diagnosed with scoliosis? Well, the whole thing with, with scoliosis or these jaw deformities is that it's, you know, it's basically an entire skeletal problem. I think the takeaway message from it is, is that if you have a skeletal problem, you're going to have problems in multiple areas. So we, typically, like if we're looking at an x-ray and we see one skeletal anomaly or one skeletal deformity, we know we're going to see another one somewhere in the spine or somewhere in the body. So, you know, dental uh, deformities may be something if from the research I've read for a thing called an ogival palate or there's other things called increased overjet, reduced overbites. You know, those are other jaw deformities you're going to see with you know, scoliosis. Skeletally, you might see something called a hemivertebra, which is instead of a vertebra being shaped like a a block or a square is going to be shaped more like a triangle, like a wedge, and that can cause, you know, obviously a curvature in the spine. Uh, you'll see things like spina bifida, developmental problem called the osteogenesis imperfecta. Um, you can also see issues with feet, where the feet have more bones than they're supposed to have. So, you know, it's it uh, seems like it's a mixed bag when it comes to these anomalies. You know, if you have a skeletal problem, you're going to have multiple problems from your skull all the way to your feet. So, it just seems how it just seems to be how it goes when you have scoliosis. So how can a concerned parent contact you? Do you offer any sort of consultation over the phone or in person to, I guess, inspect their, their child and make sure they don't have some of these skeletal deformities? Yes. Yes, we do. I have, I have spoken to hundreds of uh, parents over the phone. Obviously, they have questions. and they've. You know, anytime you find out your child has a problem, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to try to find out as much as you can about that specific condition. So they go on the Internet. They see that there's myriad of information out there and they get a little confused and so I've you know taken lots of calls over the phone for parents looking for information the preferred thing is to have obviously a child come to the office for a consultation to really see what's going on you know get some uh, professional look at this situation with the child so we offer a no charge consultation and that basically you can just sit down and talk to us about uh, what's going on bring your x-rays in 
we don't have x-rays, we uh, do have uh, we do have the ability to shoot uh, digital x-rays. Uh, we do charge a fee for that, but it's inexpensive compared to a uh, uh, hospital or imaging center. Or, the, you know, or people can just get on our websites and, and uh, contact us through our websites, either on pavancacairo.com or crackscoliosis.com. We've got all kinds of ways for people to contact us. So we're more than happy to talk to anybody uh, about their child or about their scoliosis. Our office number is uh, area code 480 and then 892-0022. Well, Dr. Vavanka, thanks for taking the time out of your busy day to talk with us about some of these really interesting correlations between jaw and tooth deformities and scoliosis in children. Uh, certainly a serious issue and you're doing great work out there. I appreciate your time today. Well, thanks for having me on the show, Ken. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.